Joining me now, Julie, Julie Reginski, who's a former political advisor to New Jersey Democratic Senator Frank Lautenberg and a Fox News contributor. Melissa Francis is host of Money with Melissa Francis here on FBN. <laughs> and Thomas Belisis is the CEO and founder of John Thomas Financial. So look, they're, what they're talking about is we don't have a deal. We're trying to reach a deal. We're about to see huge tax hikes and huge defense uh, cuts and a bunch of other tax and popular measures that are going to go if this deal kicks in on January 1st. So now they're trying to find a way to avoid that, which they failed to do repeatedly. Big surprise. OK, but time's <laughs> out. It's done. The time is out. Uh, they're very, very focused now. And even we heard Republicans now focusing more on not raising tax rates for the rich, but getting rid of these loopholes, deductions, and so on for the rich, which was what Romney had talked about, although without specifics. Does that happen? And what specifically is likely to go away and for whom? I, 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 I think in the end it goes further than that, but the sad truth of the matter, and I think everybody at this table would agree with this, is that none of those solutions really close the gap. They don't get you close. They are all a drop in the bucket. That is what is so terrifying about this problem, that without the accompanying cut in spending, big cuts, big reform, this huge gap is going to continue. If you confiscated all the wealth of the top 1%, you still don't come close. I mean, all the wealth. I'm not talking about raising their taxes. I mean, take away their money and give it to the government, it wouldn't solve the problem. We have a huge hole. But it's so a start, that's back the and argument. Forth, it's I a guess. start, you gotta start somewhere. Why, why not start in the backs of the rich as opposed to the middle class? Well, you know, look, I would support that versus, for, for example, getting rid of the mortgage deduction because that's something that does really help the middle class. It does help home ownership to the extent that we they now think... They would get rid of it for everybody, would they? Well, I don't know. I mean, who at this point, who knows? Listen, I used to work in the Senate. These guys are experts at kicking the can down the road yeah. and talking, talking, talking. I don't think we'll have... I, frankly, am in the minority who doesn't think we'll have a deal by January 1st because I know these guys and I know their ability to kick the can down the road. You're seeing brinksmanship on both sides now. Everybody's saying, well, it's a negotiation tactic. I'm not so sure. I think they're so set in their ways. I think they're so committed to their respective bases, both the left and the right, mm -hmm. that it's going to be very hard for them to do the statesman-like thing, come together, a word we haven't heard, by the way, in a long time That's in Washington, thing, to come like, together. What, what about that, John? Because even if you do raise taxes on the rich significantly, I mean, let's say the entire country gets behind that, and these Republicans aren't behind that, but let's say that the entire country got behind doing that. It's not going to solve the problem. So something else will have to happen. Either other people besides the rich will also have to get sure. taxed. Um, or and or really and or we're going to have to have huge spending cuts not little bitty spending cuts where they save like a trillion dollars over 10 years i mean we need huge spending cuts they're saying to get us out of this mess that's correct and these are all great points but i have to say that i do believe it's going to come down to the wire but there will be a resolution to the fiscal cliff let me tell you why you believe in courage in washington i do because of the fact Hallelujah. that you <laughs> 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 and, uh, <laughs> uh, let me tell you why i believe that i mean the president now is not going on re-election he's already elected so he has the opportunity now to bring both parties together to show resolution that we can come together to do what's best for the economy because let's look at the negative the negatives far outweigh any unwilling compromise i mean god forbid they don't come to a resolution you're going to have two to four percent off of the gdp just like this you're going to have the unemployment in january go up substantially along with the drop in unemployment benefits from 90 nine weeks to 26 weeks mm -hmm. you know the payroll that's one of the many things that's going to get hit is if you think it's just the rich you're wrong because the unemployment benefits are going to go, if it's, go it, the under cliff. the current deal off the cliff correct you, what's really scary is that there is really only one solution to supporting this enormous government the way it is and continuing down this road and it's a value-added tax the VAT that is what Explain they that. have in Europe that that is a tax on everything along the way every time you add value you get taxed they have that in Europe you buy a single thing you do anything and you see it on their VAT I mean it could if it were 10 percent it would raise $750 billion in a year and take care of a fifth of federal spending. But the argument against that that is so compelling is that instead of starving the beast and bringing costs in line with government, this creates a whole new revenue stream. It creates a monster in government that would just get larger and larger and crowd out private spending and innovation. I mean, when Apple makes a decision to go make an investment and invent an iPad, there are so many add-on industries from that. There's everybody that makes all the gadgets your kids have to get to go with it. There's all the productivity, innovation, people hired here, people hired in PR to sell it, people at the stores. That's an investment. When you crowd out that investment because the government takes that money away, they think they know better, that stalls the economy. That stalls America. The, the, other, the other thing is, you know, even though in theory you think, let's soak the rich, because the same way 
you know, we enjoy the story to some sick extent about Holly Berry and those two beautiful men having, you know, it's just like there, you, it, there's something about beautiful people that makes you, like, want to hear about their imperfections. Um, In the sense that we would take the leftover one, whichever one she doesn't want, I think we'd all agree. You know, <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah. they're yeah. all three of them are incredibly yeah. beautiful. It's the same sort of feeling about the rich. Like, you, you don't really mind if, you, if they're made to pay more. But the question is, where does that money go? And are they the only ones who are likely to get soaked? We talked to Starwalt at the beginning of the no, show no, no, about whether we're going to see more Jeff Neely in the tub if, if our money keeps no. going to, to the Fed. No, but look, I, I will say, going back to the Clinton tax rates is not exactly soaking the rich. And in fact, the rich have actually, the very there top 1%. Top. The very is. top, yeah. I don't want to pay for yeah. his second glass. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know who that second glass is for. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the real, that's the real disturbing image there. But he, uh, you know, people like that are, are not going to get soaked if you're asking to pay just a little bit more. I think the larger concern is the spending cuts that we're talking about as well, the defense cuts, Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid, you know, so on and so forth. There is a special interest group in D.C. for every single one what of these. About, what about the, and, the, and, the, and they're the all smaller? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a judgment, yeah. but the smaller sort of, uh, you know, we talked earlier about Durbin, who, who agreed, okay, let's raise the retirement age for Social Security by one year. I can get behind that. But not immediately, not now. Not like, okay, you're 66 or 67 now, and, and we're going to push it a year. 20 or 30 years down the line. Yeah. And it was like, ah! You can't do it! I mean, there's no political Absolutely. will to do any change. There's no political will to do that. There's no political will to raise, uh, you know, when you're taxed with Social Security, you're only taxed in the first, what is it, hundred, a hundred and ten thousand dollars mm -hmm. of your income? Mm -hmm. Raise it a little bit. I mean, there's certain things that you could tinker with, and I don't know if it'll solve all your problems, but... That, but that's the problem. Yeah. Those things don't make the difference, and rather than everyone but, but collectively, if you do a little, 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 does it all add up I to a lot? I don't think so. I think you. Ha I think it's like the VAT tax. I mean, I think you have to do something huge in order to make a difference, and rather than everybody focusing on not having their piece of the pie the government come and take a bite out of it and you're not going to take from mine we should be focusing on growing the whole pie mm -hmm. getting behind that what about Rather that because that was romney's big this. thing at that first debate where he did so well he talked all about growth what we need is more growth that will increase the revenues more than anything but what is i mean how do you do so much easier said than done well, Megan, i'll yeah. tell you ultimately the, you know the world the economy everything works on confidence right no one is confident right now because they don't know what direction taxes are going why they should spend you know in certain areas for their business to grow they don't know yet and until we have a resolution to that a defined resolution that makes sense for everybody no one's going to want to spend on their businesses, which is going to help the economy grow, and that's a, exactly what we need to do. We got to keep. If you hike the taxes of those of those businesses, because this is an argument that Republicans make, if, if you hike their taxes, two hundred and fifty thousand and over includes a lot of businesses. Do we see decreased growth? Yes. Or is that just a Republican talking no, point? No, no, it's not. You know, it's gonna, you're going to see decreased growth, and you're going to see people really hold back on spending, and that's not what you want to do right now. We have to increase spending in the areas that matter to get this economy back up and going. And right now, until there is a defined resolution, a compromise in Washington, you know, it makes two parties to make a deal. You're both going to walk away being unhappy. That's mm -hmm. a good compromise, right? Mm -hmm. Unless they're unhappy on both ends, there's not going to be a deal. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Well, guys, thank you very much. Good debate, as <laughs> always. A pleasure seeing you.